We are all going to age. Yes, even you, Miss 20-year-old. And you know, that next inevitable step that freaks most people out. But maybe there's a different definition of being ageless. Maybe it's more to do with our mindset. And maybe we're more than just a number. We are ageless. So, if being ageless isn't about looking younger, what the heck does it mean? Are you ready? Ready. And where are you in your ageing journey? Are you feeling invisible? Oh, dear. In denial? Do this, do that, do this. I don't know a woman who doesn't go past mirror and go... Irrelevant. People change the way they talk to you. Are you all right, darling? Uncool. People think if you're old... We don't know anything about life in today's world. One would hope that as you age, you get more cool because you're more aware of who you are. Or are you changing things up? Changing course. It's never too late to reinvent yourself. That's the answer. Just do it. Getting out of your comfort zone. Jumping out of an airplane? You crazy? Finding new love. It's never too late to fall in love. Dating at older age is more fun. Reconnecting with old love. <laughs> Fell in love with Sharon straight away. Or finding yourself consumed by a passion even greater than yourself. This is tougher than it sounds. What have I got to do to get everything in order? I've done it before, I can do it again. And the realities of getting older are always right there. The doctor said there's no easy way of telling you this. It'd be awful lonely, wouldn't it, to live your last several days without a partner? It was just too hard. So we've invited some experts. Heidi, our relationship counsellor, and Ange, our style mentor, to help those who grapple with the challenges. It's time to shake things up a little. Let's get into it, shall we? Best gossip session ever. And it's all about you. <gasps> oh, my goodness. OK, where's the margarita? I hope you've got a big magic wand. Oh, I do. <laughs> and we've invited Another host who seeks those who truly believe that it's their age that is irrelevant. Great, how are you, mate? Thank you, mate. So inspiring to encounter these people that, as they progress into older age, they're living their best lives. Yeah, you too. A few years ago, I lost my parents very close together, and it's brought, I guess, the next phase of life into focus. My parents were so inspirational to me in their older age. They were endlessly active and curious, but I regret never getting around to asking them more questions about their seemingly ageless approach to it all. What was their secret? So now I'm seeking out those who also seem ageless to me to have those conversations that I didn't get to have with mum and dad. Well, we're all alone, ultimately. It's about finding that peace within. And when you're on your own, there are less external stimuli. So it gives a person the opportunity to be more silent and focused, hopefully. And I listen to the silence. It's very simple, really. I wake up generally 5.30, and um, struggle out of bed a little bit, wander around. I put the kettle on and make a cup of tea, and I always go straight out into the back garden. I'll have a shower outside. The first person on my list who seems to have this ageless approach to life 
is Sarah Jane Adams. She's 68, she's married, but she chooses to live alone in inner city Sydney. I generally go to yoga either 10 o'clock in the morning or midday class. I mean, on so many levels, it's my life. I allow myself the gift of having the time to be able to do it. In fact, this morning in the practice, I became emotional because I just realized here I am with my two children practicing yoga, what a gift. Just simple, really. She's been described as an iconoclast, mother, style icon, author, and a rebel. A lot of people are stuck in their prime, thinking that their prime time was when they were 15, 20, 25, 30, 45, whatever, and they kind of get stuck in that version of themselves. But everything's changing all the time. Everything's evolving all the time. That's the nature of life. There only is now. Therefore, obviously, prime time is now. I have no ambition to be anything other than who I am, but a better version of myself. Not a calmer, less bolshy version of myself, <laughs> stroppy version of myself, but hopefully a bit more accepting of people who are different in their opinions about things. And from the moment I saw a picture of her in Instagram, she was rocking a red Adidas retro tracksuit. All she had on was lipstick, no makeup, incredibly natural, hair was kind of everywhere. It was totally unusual for someone of 68 years of age. I don't dress to look like I'm dressing up. This uniform, version of a uniform, is actually what I use to hide behind. I thought this woman has an incredible sense of self. My clothes are my armour. She looks like an artist. That sounds like I'm a total weirdo. She has an enormous following on Instagram, which was not surprising. I was the only old person pretty much on Instagram in those old, in those days. You could tell she really didn't give a stuff about what people thought. I'm born to be a revolutionary. I'm born to be a rebel. And I will own it. I will be it until the day before the day I die. I might, um, on my deathbed, I might retract a few things, but I probably won't. <laughs> I was intrigued and I was very, very keen to hear more and learn more about her story. So if I had to describe my mum in a few words, I would say fearless, rebellious, bold, curious and playful, independent and strong. Mum has such a tough exterior, but she's also, you know, she's human and she's soft and she's vulnerable and she's gentle. And she handles it really well. She, I think she internalizes a lot because of her independence, but I mean, it's the nature of being in the public eye. I hadn't any clue about Instagram. I always used to say things should sell themselves because of their beauty and the stories they tell. And David took a photograph of me in an Adidas collegiate jacket. And um, Tash posted it on Insta with the hashtag, my mum is cooler than me. She also hashtagged advanced style. Ari Seth Cohen is the photographer and the creator of advanced style. He coincidentally was in Australia and he saw the picture, came over the next day, reshot the photograph, went back to America, put it on his blog. That was seven, maybe seven years ago now, with no idea of what was going to come. My numbers on Insta went from 350 to 4,000. Everything just kind of exploded from there. Adidas caught on and the world started to pay attention to this amazing woman who was, yeah, actually cooler than most of the people I know at my age, she was in her 50s then and just absolutely rocking it. One would hope that as you age, you get more cool because you're more aware of who you are. But that's when it started. My life went off on a curveball. Are we ready? Ready. Hey. Hello, hello. Well, nice to see you. Hey, how are you? Ooh. Ooh. 
Nice well? to see you too. Yes, welcome. Oh, you look lovely. Thank you. Come on in, Grey. Yes. Wow. What, that's what everyone. That's everyone's reaction when they I first bet. come in. I bet. Where do you where, where do you start? What the... It's so eclectic. It's wow. minimal maximisation, is I think what it's called. Oh. I don't know. But anyway, wow. if you I want love to put labels. Walls. Thank you. Yes, they're all different. This is the original Victorian wallpaper. Mm. So this, the this colouring piece. here, this oh, is wow. a chinoiserie, probably 1870, 1880 wallpaper. My mum, these colours, she would have absolutely loved that. <laughs> she had a watercolour. It was huge. It was about four metres long. That yeah. She painted exactly like that. Are your folks still around? Or? No, no. I lost mum and dad a few years ago. Nine weeks apart. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, I'm mm. so sorry. Mm. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, that must have been so hard for you. It was, yeah, yeah. Mm. Anyway, life goes on, as they say. It does, mm. indeed. So, yes. so and my sister now bought Mum and Dad's house, so it stays in the family, so it's lovely. That was going yeah. to be my next question. So yeah. where is the painting now? Yeah, it's, it's going to hang in Emily, my sister's house. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, let's keep exploring. After let's you. Let's do it. <laughs> So I've loved getting to know your story. Um, I've obviously read your book. Thank you. Looked at all your Instagram. Oh. <laughs> and I was, I guess I was just instantly drawn to your I don't give a stuff mm. kind of attitude. Mm. The way you dress, it's just so unique, especially for someone of your age. I know that sounds terrible. No, 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 it doesn't at all. I'm not concerned about what other people think about me. No, clearly. Which is good yeah. because I've been bashed mm. on the socials. It's an evil, evil thing, social media, I think. You know, it seemed like a glamorous, wonderful thing. It gave me great opportunities. Jobs came in, blah, 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 and I just kind of followed it for about two years. I followed it like a rogue, like a cat. You know, it was all adrenaline excited. We did some amazing things. I was flown all over the world doing shoots. The first shoot that I ever did was for Miu Miu. I ticked the old person diversity box. Fortunately, I, again, I listened to my inner whatever, and it said, don't follow anybody, take your fa family off, but, oh my God, social media is a cesspit. Slaughtered on the socials, absolutely slaughtered. And I'm thinking, why am I opening myself up to all this abuse? Why am I allowing this to happen to myself? It's not fair. It's because I'm a woman, I have an opinion, I'm not embarrassed by my opinion. She's always had critics. You know, there's always been people that said she's too bold and she's too flamboyant and she's too rebellious. Throughout all of that, I found my voice. And now, I'm in who I am comfortably and with great settlement. I think that what going to boarding school did for me is actually reinforced that I was a round peg in a square hole. I think it was actually now a really good thing and I'm lucky because I learnt that really, really, really early on. So you've always been a rebel? I've always been a rebel by being sent away to school, to boarding school, where you were only literally allowed to take two things to put onto your little box beside your bed. I had to start to toughen up. So you broke away from boarding school. Yes. You interviewed for a public school. Yes. And you dressed up in... Well, I had to go, I had to go for the interview because my parents were both working uh, and I lived in a village that was a long way away from where the school was and there wasn't a bus route. And I had one lesson on my father's old motorbike, a 250cc motorbike. One which, lesson? One lesson, oh. yes, on the Sunday. And here I turned up in rocking leathers, you know? And so that ride you describe as being this long, long ride, ride to, to independence yeah. or a long ride to freedom. Yeah. And that's it was just the a, beginning. Yeah. It was the beginning. So many people go through so many phases yeah. of character. You've maintained Absolutely. this similar character your whole life. Mm. That's amazing. Obviously, we used to go through phases of mm, fashion, I suppose. But even that, I've always combined. Like, mm. I'll wear streetwear with hippie clothes. You have to be true to who you are mm. and not be a people pleaser. Welcome wow. to my boudoir. 
This is my bedroom. Bedroom scene. Bedroom Love scene. It. Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. So, um... Fabrics. Fabrics. Yeah. Pashminas. I've worn this for lots of photo shoots and things. What sort of drew you to Adidas? I don't have a figure, a body for tailored clothing, so Adidas tracksuits and things, which were kind of not fitted, but kind of cool. And the camo? Oh, that's another uniform. I've got mass masses of camo. This is just a small part of my camo. This is clearly a distinct sense of style. I mean, I've been going to India since I was very, very young. Mm. I've learnt about c colour combinations and draping. Mm. That's my favourite. Layers, layers and layers. covering and just combining colours and shapes. And yeah. I've always... Normally, I wear two or three belts. That's my formality, right. is to wear a belt as a... Stay away from me. Yeah, I have right. my belt it's part on. part of the armour. Yes, mm. absolutely. I became more selfish throughout my menopause because I owned it. I embraced it, I took it on, like it was pretty hideous at times, but it was also an amazing liberation. It goes on for a long, long time. I started at 46 and I'm now 68, and um, I wanted to go through the process, I went through the process, but there was never enough time for me because for years and years and years, I've always had to tick all the boxes of, you know, mother, business, international phone calls, blah, 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 emails. If you choose to embrace it, it makes you strong, it gives you the ultimate permission to be yourself. Like, in a way, you're free. My daughter, Tash, introduced me to yoga. I only started practicing when I was 59. I'm so grateful to Tash, really, for steering me in that direction. I'm not chill, but I'm able to be chill. Before, I couldn't even take a proper deep breath. Now I can. I do believe, you know, when you get to 65-ish, if you're lucky, you're sort of entering into your third trimester of life, so to speak. For me, it's become a very different way of being and a different way of thinking. And uh, it involves a lot of shedding. In my line of business, which has always been, as an antique dealer and as a jewellery dealer, I really, really witnessed firsthand the pain that people who were left things suffered the confusion, the guilt, the grabbing, the... I mean, every single negative emotion that you can possibly have is sometimes encapsulated in a thing when somebody who it belonged to hasn't given it to the person to whom it should have gone. It saves an awful lot of hoo-ha. I'm really stripping back to the things that are absolutely necessary, and the more I get rid of, the more easy it is to get rid of things. People talk about Swedish death cleansing. I mean, I'm calling it hashtag Newtown death cleanse. That's my new hashtag. But I think at this stage in life, hopefully a person is more clear on what is really, truly important. I'm really now trying to live my life in a very spontaneous way rather than in a formal way. And now I have told everybody, don't ring me, I'll ring you. But I'm not a big one for booking in advance, including my yoga classes. Because I have to listen to the body and I sort of have to also feel as though I've tidied my desk. I like to finalise things before I then embark on something else. I have to be clear and free in my head. You hear so often, oh, I can't wear that, I'm too old, or I can't do that, I'm too old. I think that's something that mum's never subscribed to. You know, there's no such thing as too old for anything. I think she's embraced ageing. I'm only inspirational if people take action. My motivation is to just show people how a 68-year-old or a 65, whatever it was, can live a life. Well, Sarah Jane Adams, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Gray.
It has been my pleasure as well, and thank you so much for having come to my humble abode. Thank so you. thank no, thank you. Thank, thank you. you so so much. Thank you. Next episode, Gray continues his quest to seek out those who appear ageless Hi, Gray. in the truest sense of the word. Most of the year, I'm actually alone here. I felt completely in love with that man. Did you bury him? Yeah, yeah, we transported him in, in the wheelbarrow. Really? In his wheelbarrow. Oh, you don't know that story? No. Instantly, I thought, oh my God, she has no idea what she's in for. Did you think this was all going to be too much? 